Hey there, I'm Jacob Prosnick, and today I'm gonna to be teaching you kind of how I would approach seawalls on Bash U TV. Uh, you know, seawalls are kind of a, a difficult, um, I would say a shenanigan to approach. You know, a lot of people, they have the, uh, the mentality like, you know, you, you get a lake, maybe like Lake Conroe in Texas, that is nothing but it's lined with absolutely seawalls. So the whole concept is, you know, in the springtime, you're going to want to you're going to want to find those seawalls that are, um, I would say, shallower than any of the rest because that's where those bass are going to you know pull up to spawn on those little shallow sandbars and stuff. A lot of times you're not going to be able to see that, so you know you can use your Lawrence Electronics to maybe idle down and see those little flat places that stick out inside of a pocket or you know any irregular any irregular uh, feature. That, that you're going to see and I mean as you can see we have some seawalls behind us and, and we'll let you know here in, in a few minutes um, about how I approach you know these seawalls in, in the spring early spring to mid spring when the bass are spawning to sept, you know to summertime even throughout the fall so um, you know the the thing the thing about springtime seawall fishing you know you got a shad spawn you know, and, and Lake Conroe, I, I can tell you, if you look back at the Bassmaster Classic that we had on Conroe, you know, Edwin Evers was, got filmed a lot throwing a spinnerbait down a seawall first thing in the morning because the shad spawning. I was doing the same thing. Actually, me and Edwin were fishing kind of in the same area. And, you know, just typical, just a typical shad color spinnerbait. <laughs> I don't know if this is just my preference, but I always love a hammered blade. I hate a, just a straight, blade that is you know this the slick and all that i think a hammered blade always kind of puts out more flash and and especially you know that's a early morning you know the first hour deal is a shad spawn you know um spinnerbait a livingston this is a howler and then just a square bill you know just like a 2.0 square this is a, a livingston 2.0 square and basically you're going to bump your boat up against that seawall and get on it and fish it as, 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 as thorough as you can. You know, those fish are not going to be four feet out off of it. They're going to be sitting right on it because there's shad and stuff are spawned right up there. You know, they're, they're boiling right up there on the actual seawall. So you want your bait to come parallel right through the, uh, right through the whole, you know, the nest or whatever we call them, the, the balls of shad that when they're up there spawning and, and pay attention because a lot of times during that time of year, they're going to be on some of the deeper out, you know, main river, main lake, actual seawalls where, you know, the, it's a, it, it'll come off and it might be six foot deep. You're not going to be targeting those shallower seawalls. You know, it's going to be an outdoor deal, maybe a seawall on a point, you know, the shad at night move up there to spawn and, and they're actually spawning when, you know, when you take off. So you, you're going to have to kind of sit there and kind of a little bit of trial and error, but once you find out what was going on, you know, uh, also a, a jerk bait, you know, works very good that time of year. Livingston uh, jerk bait is really good. Actually, me and Hank Cherry caught a bunch of fish at Conroe on a jerk bait, you know, going down those seawalls when, when they kind of got off the spinner bait deal is a more subtle, you know, in their face kind of presentation. So this, you know, just a few little tips of doing that. And then, you know, that's kind of early in the year type deal. And then, then the the spawns over and the bass start spawning and that's what i was talking about earlier where you're going to be able to find you a section that that that's a little bit shallower or has a little bit of grass maybe growing out there you know they have um like at conroe i'm using that example because that's the only lake that i know that is lined wall to wall with with sea walls you know and it's it just keeps going through my mind but you'll get to a little flat point that has some grass and that seawall and, and those bass will spawn right up against it because nine times out of ten there's people that put those seawalls in there's concrete down there you know how bass are they want to spawn around something that's hard or some kind of uh, related structure and 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 you can kind of figure that out pretty easily um, some of the baits that that i would use um, this is a vnm this is our uh, vnm flatworm you can get them at vnm it's just a just a little bitty worm. I, I don't, you know, everybody wants to go out there and throw something giant or big because it's springtime. I, I'm a spinning rod guy in the spring. I don't know why, uh, why I'm like that, but I, I just feel that I can catch every bass that, that that I go down through, you know, go down through there and pitch around. And if, and if he sees it, he's going to eat it. And, and I mean, I don't know how many 
It's Mike Iaconelli. This is Bash U TV. Here's what's awesome about Bash U TV. You get the top instructors. Real tools that help you catch more fish consistently. And that's why you want to check out Bash U TV. Join the Bass U family. Welcome to Bass U TV.